All right, so picking up where we left off, uh, number nine is actually the same exact problem as number five. So if you want to, you can go back up here to number five and if this is it. Yes, number five. And you can see that's the exact same problem. So if you want to rewrite the information down, you can, or if you just want to mark it out and put, um, and put, just mark it out and look at number five, that's okay here. Okay, so we're going to skip number nine since it's exactly the same as the last problem, and we're going to move on to number 10. All right, number 10 says find the maximum or minimum or maximum value of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 3. And it also says, is it a maximum or a minimum? Now here, you've got to pay attention to the a value. In this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to positive 3. Now, since a is equal to positive 1, that tells me that it's a positive number, meaning it opens up. Now, if something opens up, you kind of have to think about it. Um, like, I like to think about it as mountains and valleys. If it opens up, it's going to look like a valley, which means valleys have low points. If it's opening down, all right, this is down. If it's opening down, then that means it's like a mountain or a hill, and hills and mountains have high points or maximums. So in this particular problem, since A is equal to 1, we're going to say that it opens up. Therefore, if it opens up, it's going to have what we call a minimum. Now, the way you find that minimum is by looking at the vertex, because the vertex always determines the max or min. So to find that, all we're going to do is just simply do the vertex formula, x equals negative b over 2a, since this is in standard form. So in this problem, we've got b is negative 6, so that's going to be negative times negative 6, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So here, negative times negative 6 is positive 6, and then 2 times 1 is 2 which makes our x part of our vertex 3. So we can go ahead and identify that the vertex, I'm going to put a v for ver vertex, but the vertex here is going to be uh, 3 comma and then some number. So the way we find that number is by taking 3 and substituting it back in to the original problem for x and x. So here we have y is equal to x, which we said we're going to substitute in at 3, squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. So we know 3 squared is equal to 9. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. And then negative 18, we have a plus 3 on the end. So to solve this, all we're going to do is say 9 minus 18. We know 9 minus 18 is going to be negative 9. And then negative 9 plus 3 is going to be negative 6. So that tells me that in this problem, I'm going to have a vertex at 3 comma negative 6, and then to identify the lowest point, that should be the lowest point, since it's a minimum. Now, if you wanted to identify the y value, then you would say y is equal to negative 6, meaning that's the lowest the y value would be whenever you're searching for the minimum. So, just to kind of be cautious there, if it asks for the point, then you know that it's asking for the vertex. Oops, sorry. But if it's asking for the lowest y value, then you'll want to make sure you clarify there. All right, looking at number 11. Problem number 11 says, write the quadratic function in standard form given the zeros 6 and negative 4. Now, if I'm given 6 and negative 4 and those are zeros or x-intercepts or roots, then I know that that's going to be in the formula, form of the factored form or the, or the factored form or the intercept form. So that form looks like this, y equals a x minus or x minus p x minus q and you may want to write that down that's not a form that you'll see on your test but you may want to study that and write it down so when i'm dealing with this form it tells me my zeros are six and negative four it doesn't say anything about the a value so we'll assume it's one so here what we're going to have is a value is one so we don't need to write anything down there but then the values are six and negative four so the opposite when we substitute back in we want to do the opposite so here we're going to write x minus 6 and make it look like a negative 6. And then instead of writing negative 4, we're going to write x plus 4 when we substitute those back into the problem. Now, to get this in standard form, you can do it one of two ways. You can use the box strategy, or you can FOIL, or you can use distributive property. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to do the FOIL, or I'm going to FOIL so that I can work it out and make sure I got it right. Then I'll do the box strategy as well. So here we've got x times x. That's going to be x squared. We've got the outsides, which is x times 4, that's 4x. We've got the insides, which is negative 6 times x, which is negative 6x. 
and then negative 6 times 4 is going to be the last, which is negative 24. To finish this out, just combine the two middle terms, and we've got y equals x squared, and then 4 minus 6 is going to be negative 2x minus 24. And that should take us back into standard form, which is what the problem was asking, right? The quadratic function in standard form, so that's what we did. Now, understand, you can do it this way, or you can do it with box strategy. The box strategy just does the exact same thing, but when you get down, when you get down to this point, instead of foiling, you write it out on top of the box and on the side of the box. So that would be x and negative 6, and then x and plus 4, or positive 4. So x times x would be x squared. 4 times x would be 4x, x times negative 6 would be negative 6x, and then 4 times negative 6 would be negative 24. When you combine these two terms, you would get a final answer of y equals x squared. Negative 6 plus 4 is going to be negative 2x minus 24. So you still should get this exact same answer, just a little bit more, it's a little bit, a little bit more visual for those of you who like to see it out, written out visually. If you're more of a mathematical person, you'll probably like this way better. It just depends on which way, which way you like to work the problem out. All right, so that's number 11. Number 12. Number 12 said write the vertex form, and then it wants you to identify the y-intercept. So we already know from a previous problem that the y-intercept, when written in standard form, is always going to be 0, comma c. Or here is going to be 0, comma positive 3. So that's really easy to identify. But to write it in vertex form, we need to be able to find the vertex. So this goes back, once again, to the formula x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b, we know b is going to be positive 4, times 2a. So a is going to be negative 2. So when we solve this, negative times 4 is negative 4. 2 times negative 2 is going to be negative 4. And then negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. So that gives me the h for my vertex form. Now, we already know a. a we know is going to be equal to negative 2. So we don't need to look anywhere for that. It's located over here. Um, so we got a, h. And then the last thing we need for vertex form is k. So to find k, we substitute it back in. So that's going to be y equals negative 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 3. So here we're going to have 1 squared is going to be 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 times 1 is going to be negative 4. And then plus 3 on the end. So when we solve that out, we're going to have negative 2 minus 4 is going to be negative 6. And negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3. So that tells me the K for my problem here as well. Now on the test tomorrow, the formula sheet will give you this formula. And that's going to be Y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k, the vertex form. So once you know the a, h, and k, you can figure out the vertex form just by simply filling in what you know. So here a was negative 2. We know that h is positive 1, so since it's negative h, we're going to make it a negative 1. Change the sign on that. And then k is just k, so we just write in negative 3 on the end. And then that's going to take it into vertex form for us. Remember, if you want to identify the vertex, the vertex is the same thing as h and k, so that would be 1, comma, negative 3 in this problem. So there's your vertex if you needed to find it. All right, so that's number 12. Number 13, identify the vertex. So it gives us kind of what we were just talking about. This is vertex form, so all we have to do is just look at h and k. So when we pull out the h, we know we got to flip the sign, so the vertex here is going to be, I'll put v for vertex, that's going to be negative 2, and then the y value here is going to be the negative 1 on the end. So our vertex is easy to find when it's in vertex form. To identify the y-intercept, we're going to need to write it out in standard form, which it also says write in standard form, so that works out for us. So to write this out in standard form, all we're going to do is just write out our x plus 2 squared as x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then we'll have minus 1 on the end. And then this is going to be, once again, distributive property. So you're going to be either foiling or you're going to be box strategy here. So I'm going to go ahead and do box strategy. So that's going to be x plus 2 and x plus 2. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is going to be 2x. x times 2 is 2x. And then 2 times 2 is also 4. So I can figure out real quick that y is going to be equal to x squared 
2x plus 2x is 4x plus 4. All right, now that takes care of the box strategy part, but I still got this minus 1 on the end. So what I've got to do with that is just simplify it down. So that's x squared plus 4x, and then 4 minus 1 is going to give me positive 3. So that takes it into standard form for me here. So to find the intercept, the y-intercept, all I need to do for that is just write down 0 comma c. So here now we know the c, fi c value, so that's going to be 0 comma positive 3. So once again, not too bad to work that one out. A little bit of distributive property, but I think you guys can do that pretty easily. All right, we've got one more problem, and then we're going to stop the video so that we can do all the 15 in one video as well. So in number 14, it says given y equals, and then it gives us this problem of 3x minus 5 and x minus 7. It says, does the parabola open up? Okay, so that's going to be the a value, which we know here the a value is understood to be 1. So if the a value is 1, that's positive, so that means it opens up. So we can go ahead and identify that. Does it have a maximum or minimum? So remember, if it opens up, that's like opening like a valley. Therefore, it's going to have a low point, which is a minimum. So this has a minimum. What are the x-intercepts? It is written in intercept form, so we should be able to figure that out. Now this one's a little tricky because I can't just take the opposite of it because of this 3x here. So what I have to do is I have to actually set these equal to 0. So I'm going to say 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. And the other one we could flip, but since we're setting it equal to 0, let's go ahead and do that. So to solve this, that would be add 5 to both sides. We got 3x is equal to 5, divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 5 thirds. On the other side of this, once again, we could have just flipped it and got positive 7, but here we're just going to add 7 to both sides, and we get 0 plus 7 is 7. So it's really easy to do that if you need to, but that's going to indicate your x-intercepts. So we know both of these, all right, those are going to be your x-intercepts. And then to find the y-intercept, you're going to need to FOIL this out, or go ahead and distribute it out. So since I did box strategy last time, I'll do FOIL this time. So in this one, I've got 3x minus 5, and I've got x minus 7. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to FOIL it out, so 3x times x is going to be 3x squared. I've got outsides, which is 3x times negative 7, which is negative 21x. I got negative 5 times x, which is negative 5x, and then negative 5 times negative 7, which is going to be positive 35. So when I write this out in standard form, I'm going to get 3x squared, negative 21 minus 5 is going to be negative 26x, and then plus 35. So when you're looking at this in standard form, which is that's what we got here, when you're looking at it in standard form, once again, we know this is 0 comma c. So to find that, we would look at the C value, and the answer here would be 0, 35. So you can find it relatively easy. There's a little bit of work involved there, but to find the y-intercept, it's not a whole lot of work. Just write it out in standard form, and you can go from there. All right, so that takes care of number 14. The next question is going to be number 15. Now for this one, I'm going to stop the video here just so that I can, sorry about that, just so that I can uh, start fresh and get this all in in one video because it is a pretty massive problem um, But like I said, we'll work this one out in the next video and then if you have any questions, we'll uh, like I said We'll get them all answered uh, In one video it should be a short 10 minute video All right, so I'll like I said we'll end here and if you uh, If you will go ahead to the next video and it'll be explaining number 15